Just want to welcome everyone to the Stacey A. Cross podcast show. <laughs> Whether you're listening now or later, it is always the perfect time. I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name. 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 your voicemail. Hey, Stacey A. Cross here. There's no E in my name today. Try calling someone that's going to be a big part of the comfort killers and a big part of getting us to our health status. But that's neither here or there. I wanted you to hear the conversation on how we handle business and how we can make things bigger. So if he calls back during the show, I'll gladly put that in here and snap it in. Francis, just try calling you live on the air. Stacey A. Cross Show, how is it going today? We have moved to a Monday through Friday showcase. I love it, man. I feel great. I got my computer set up um, in a position where I got the great mic. You hear it. It's a good mic. I got it set up in a position that I'll never take it down so I could just literally have a feeling, have an idea, have a concept, have something I want to teach and click record and it's always there. It takes me literally five minutes to package it up and upload it. And plus, I was inspired by my boy, Thelonious C. Jones down in Atlanta, How to Stack Your Money, which reminds me, December 8th, annual, third annual, man, three years running strong. We're going to be down there, and it's going to be the Holiday Mixer Q&A session, VIP, networking event, meet and greet. It's going to be amazing. If you're interested in that, it's in the show notes, the links. If you're in Atlanta or not in Atlanta, you got to make moves. Come down there, be with us. We're going to be there. We're going to have fun, and we're going to network. We're going to be in the building. Collaboration is at its peak when we're all there together. I love that. I love that. I love being amongst people that makes me move. So I wanted to look up the word stressed today because I want to say, hey, listen, if you're stressed, I want to help you. And how do you know if you're stressed? What is the definition of stress? How could we move through stress and use stress as an indicator that we are, we need to take a break, we need to relax? What is it? What, what do we need to do when we're stressed? So pulled out my big ass Merriam, well, it's not Merriam, it's just the Webster's Dictionary, 2,169 pages in this bad boy. And on page 1801 is stress. And stress is strain, pressure, especially a force exerted upon the body that tends to strain or deform its shape. B, the intensity of such force, usually measured in pounds per square inch. Don't care about that. C, the resistance or cohesiveness of a body resisting the force. But I like definition two instead. That was just the number one definition, but I like definition two instead. Definition two says urgency, importance, significance. Whoa. If you're stressed, how important, where's the urgency? Maybe there's some urgency, there's some significance with it. It's causing some stress. Number three definition is tension, strained exertion, um, and, and, and uh, a couple other things here. But I love definition number two. And if, if I go down even further, it says here to emphasize. Of course, because if you stress something, you want to emphasize that. You want to bring it up. My mentor was on a private phone call and that phone call, someone asks, someone asks the question, Hey mentor guy, uh, what do you do? How do you know if you're stressed and what do you do? And mentor said, mentor said like this mentor said, Hey, you know, the only way that I know if I'm stressed is after I actually get stressed. So I don't, I don't feel myself being stressed. I just see the result of being stressed, which where I put on 10 pounds. And I could get that because, you know, we stress, we go to the comfort foods, to try to ease our bodies a little bit. And, um, you know, even me, I, I have a, um, you know, food problem when, <laughs> when I'm stressed out, you know, or you don't eat. So you either like lose weight or gain weight, depending on your body type, your DNA and who you are and how well you're able to handle stress. But he said, you know, I don't know. I don't know until I see my gut. 
Okay. And then you're like, oh, wow. Like you were really stressed out at that point, but he uses it as a good, uh, tool to, to identify what he's got to do with his health. So how he handles it is he gets back in the gym. He watches his weight and he brings that back down and then he gets less stressed. But how do you know if you're stressed as an entrepreneur, business person, those that want to find their purpose, you're, you're running a crazy, busy life. You got the kids, you got to go to work, you know, you have a career, you want to try to finish your book. And there's a tons of things that'll get you to that point. Maybe you're, you just, you know, everyday life, man, it's just like boxing you in. Uh, well, I want to help you today because I feel that stress is a, is a good thing. You know, there's good stress, there's bad stress. What's a good stress? Say maybe you have a huge project and it's causing you to now see the urgency behind it, the importance of it, and you get creative around it, mind map some things and get that thing done. And then through that time, you're stressed as hell. I was going through a deal in real estate and man, I had to get a lot of things done in a short amount of time and making sure those things were done on a daily basis. I was a bit stressed out, but it wasn't bad stress. I was just had to get some things done. There was some urgency with it. So when there's urgency with anything, you tend, your whole body is like a little tense. I want to help you though. There's some things that you could do when you wake up and then before you go to sleep. Now, when you wake up, the first, what is the first thing you do when you wake up? Let's be serious. Like, think about this. What is the first thing you do when you get up? Do you get up and, you know, just stretch your neck, stretch your back, take out your yoga mat, hit the gym or do you lay around, hit up Instagram a little bit, you know, scroll, uh, take a shit, take a pee pee, whatever you do. I mean, be real with yourself. What is the first thing you do? Because I'm going to give you what the first thing that you should do when you get up. All right. The first thing you should do when you get up that'll help your day to be less intensified, right? Because you want to, you want to be operating at a comfortable, I, Ooh, I said that I said comfortable. Yeah, you want to be operating from a, a, a comfortable space, all right? Yeah, the, the whole gist of it is be uncomfortable. We're not talking about this and being stressed out. Like, I don't want you to be stressed out. Like, that's not, that's not what we do, okay? We want to be cool, calm, collected at all times so that we can be creative. When we are stressed out, when we, when we are stressed out with the bad stress, we don't do things. We just tend to, like, you know, go back in the hermit crab and retreat. I don't want you to retreat. So I want to, I want your day to start off right. So the first thing you have to do is stand up when you get up, just, just get up and really just get up. Like don't sit there and linger. I have an alarm that I set on two of my devices. One is uh, Alexa. And I say, Hey, listen, at 455, there she, she, there she is. She heard, she heard her name. Now she wants to, uh, at 455, get me up. So, and then on my phone, 455 as well. But my phone goes into like this whole, I don't know, I guess it's with the new note. It goes into, I got to take that off because I don't, I really don't like it. It tells me the weather, then it goes into the top news. I don't want the top news. I don't want to be bombarded with what happened yesterday or what ha what's happening, what happened three days ago. So I noticed that when I got up, I'm hearing this loud boom, right? And it's telling me all these things. There's babies found in ceilings, and I'm like, oh my God, the war, some, something happening across the world, and what's happening with Donald Trump, and it's like, it's way too early to already be stressed out. See, the thing about stress is that it's biological. It happens on, it's a chemistry thing, you know? It, it takes effect on your muscle, it takes effects on all these organs, and really, sometimes it's happening, and to, it's, you're not aware of it. You're not aware of all these chemical reactions that are happening to you. So when you get up and, and for me, you know, and I, I messed up by allowing that thing to come through on a few night, few mornings when I wake up and it's telling me the bad news theory. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm already tilted. <laughs> I'm already tilted. So if I, I'm going to actually put it in there where some nice piano loops or some orchestras, so very calming music. Um, meditative music wakes me up. So it gradually, um, comes in, accentuates and comes in and wakes me up because I control what is happening to me. Now, instead of those chemical reactions uh, happening in my synaptic levels of my cells and their, the pathways, and they're attempting to ruin my day, I change that. 
So the first thing is to get up, get up with either silence or get up with something that is calming of nature that allow you to bring things inward. All right. So you stand up. What happens when you stand up and you put your 10 toes on the ground is you're sinking in the groundness of who you are. Okay. You're here now. You're up now. You're alive now. Okay. You have another chance now. You are in the now. Okay. So when you're in the now, it's a great time, especially when you're between sleep or, and you're between getting up fully that space right there. You are highly suggestive, suggestible. That's the word. You're highly suggestible. So in that space and time is when I want you to say a couple of things. Hold on. Let me grab the, I made the notes and the notebooks over there. Hold on one second. I'm going to come back to you. All right, I'm back. So this is what I want you to say. I want you to say, I create benevolence in my life. I create benevolence in my life. This is a benevolent day. Everything that comes to me will be compassionate, will be compassion. I will surround anything else that does not come with compassion, that comes with stress, that comes with anything other than compassion, I will surround them with solution. So I'm going to say that again. You wake up, you plant your 10 toes to the ground, and you're in a space that is highly suggestible. Still sleeps? Are you fully up? No. You're in between. You got up, and you're blessed to be up. You're blessed to be here. And you say to yourself or out loud, I create, I think you should say it out loud. I create benevolence in my life. This is a benevolent day. Everything that comes to me will be compassion. If things that come to me is opposite of compassion or involves any problems, challenges, anything other than compassion, I will surround it with solution. The darkness will not conquer me. That's what I want you to say in the morning. But don't think that you're going to get up tomorrow and you're going to say that. And you're going to get up the next day and you're going to say that. And you're going to get up. The, see, what you want, you want to do is build the momentum of solutions. Build the momentum of benevolence. So the only thing you are starting to see is everything that is good for you, good to you, compassionate, loving. You see what I'm saying? Solutions. Continue it. You want to start the momentum. <coughs> Excuse me. You want to start the momentum there. So I encourage you to not only do it tomorrow, not only do it the next day, but to do it all the time now. I've just given you what to do in the morning to set yourself apart from all the, the stresses of the day. So what happens now when you meet someone that brings something opposite of compassion to you? They're talking negative stuff. The news, you're involved in something that, that really boils your blood. All right, we're not going to let it boil our blood because we just said here, I will surround them with solutions. And I create benevolence in my life. So if you fall into the trap of not creating that benevolence, that good, okay, in your life, then you've taken four steps back. So if someone comes to you or you, something happens to you, Look at the damn thing. It's how you look at things, okay? The perception of it. Because we project what exactly what we want to see. And in that projection, we feel a certain way. So how do you project it? So let's say, you know, for example, you go to work. You've, you've said your, your affirmation in the morning. You planted your ten toes on that ground. You go to work and you meet your boss. And the boss says, hey, you, the project sucked, man. You didn't do it right, A, B, C, D, E, F. You're failing, you're late all the time, you know, come to think of it, you know, this and that, and you're, you're already feeling it. You, it's coming. 
But you again, you have to go back to the morning. So what you have to do, look at your manager in the face. Look at your manager in the eye and be okay. You don't have to nod at what they're saying as if you're agreeing to the problem, the challenge, the stress. Just sit there and be okay. And then throw compassion back at the person. How do you throw compassion back at the person? How do you do that? Let's say you're boiled up, but not today. You're not boiled up. See, what happens is if you don't feed into it, the flame disappears. The fire decreases. You keep not feeding into it. Not saying that tomorrow, if your boss says this, it's going to be, oh my God, you're going to hear the thunderclap and the rainbow is going to pop up out of the thin air. It's not going to be that. You're one step closer to compassion. And once you change, and you know it, everything around you changes. Once you look at things different, everything will look at you different. They won't have time for you anymore. So you just sit there, you look, and then after that person's talking, you just smile. You say, hey, listen, you know what? I understand. And that's it. You don't feed into it. Hey, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, what are you going to do about it? Hey, listen, tomorrow is a new day. Today, right now, is a new minute. I'll change that. I'll, I'll work on me. But I just, it, it, you know, I, I, I really want you to have a beautiful day for the rest of the day. I'm good. You know what that is? How you spun that around? That other person got to either change, get up, or get out. <laughs> like, there's no, there, there really, there's no other rules for that. You get, you've provided solution around you. You surround yourself with solution. You surround everything with solutions. You start thinking, you're looking, and now solutions are coming up at you. What happens? You go home. What do you got to do before bed? What do you got to do before bed? Plant your foot on the ground, baby. Plant your foot on the ground. And say it again. I create benevolence in my life. This is a benevolent day. This was a benevolent. You say it for the past tense. Man, everything in this day was good. This was a benevolent day. Everything that came at me was compassion. You're tricking the hell out of the universe. Hey, listen, especially when you start this and you've been kind of stressed lately, you're not going to believe it. But this thing works wonders. And I guarantee that if you keep this up, you have nothing to stress about. The stress that comes to you will be of urgency and important, just reminding you that, hey, you're going to knock this out. You're going to get real creative. There's no such thing as bad stress at this point because, of course, all you do is create benevolence in your life. And every problem that comes to you, you surround it with solution. There's no more excuses. There's no more problems. There's really no more challenges because there's a solution right there that comes with it. For every problem, there's about 100 solutions that's packed with the problem. Okay? For every problem, there's so many ways to solve that problem. But you can't see those ways because you've been so, it's just you've been foggy, foggied with keeping up with the problem, looking at the problem, just looking at the bad things, looking at the negative side of it. That's the, that's what I'm saying. Plant your feet, 10, 10 toes on the ground in the morning, 10 toes on the ground in, at night. And it even helps if you go outside. If you wake up, you wake up early, go outside. Feel the energies of space and matter and time. Just just be there and say that thing out loud. Guarantee this will change your life. You want to deal with stress? You want to deal with anything in your life? This is what works. Continue doing it, and I guarantee you, your entire universe will shift. It's the way you look at things. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name. If you found value in this episode today, go ahead and share it out to someone that you think may need it. I'm going to say that all again in the outro. Go ahead and subscribe to this podcast, Daily Shows, Monday through Friday. Also, I have live videos if you want to catch me live. I'm trying to figure out the right time to do live. I love the mornings, though, because you're fresh in the mornings, right? So if... If no other time, but between 7 and 9, I believe, probably probably more on the 9, p- 9 a.m., that I'll go live in video 
and the Comfort Killers Facebook. So check that out. A couple times out of the week, I will go live. If you don't already, just like that page, the Comfort Killers, so you could get a notification of when we go live video. If you're not in the Comfort Killers group, which is on Facebook, go ahead and find the Comfort Killers group on Facebook and, and get added in there. Because I throw the live, if you missed it on it, I throw it in there. Whatever I'm working on, I throw it in there, okay? I want you to be a part of this growing movement. I want you to be stress-free, but not just stress-free, bad stress-free. You know, good stress is good stress. Let's be serious. I want you to see the good in everyone, in everything. I want you to, to just live your life, man. Just live your life. And don't confuse yourself and don't overwhelm yourself. That's that's it. So I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name. December 8th, I want to see you in Atlanta. All right? If you have any questions for me, ask Stacey A. Cross. That's the secret podcast that I do now. Ask Stacey A. Cross. You can send your questions to hello at thecomfortkillers.com. Peace. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Stacey A. Cross Show. If you've enjoyed this episode, do me a solid and share it out to your network. Share it out to someone who may need it. Also, subscribe and leave a review. This keeps us going and going and going. And as my mission is big, you're included in it. So head over to thecomfortkillers.com right now and be a part of our growing, growing, comfort-killing movement. I am Stacey A. Cross. There is no E in my name. Until next time.